Welcome to the Esports Company High School League operating out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Here we have 12 teams competing across three games, Valorant, Overwatch, and League of Legends. And on today's broadcast, we do have some Rocket League action. And this is going to be Division 2, which is Junior Varsity. Ranks don't matter, or well, they do, but it's an open league, so any rank can play in it. So all the schools competing in this league are from Pennsylvania. And it's it's going to be a pretty awesome stream if I do say so myself. So it's a six week regular season. Then in late April, maybe early May, we have playoffs and the championship. And so far, the series today will be best of threes. So I am Cyrus Stims and I am joined by Atro. Atro, hello. how are you doing today? Hello, hello. I'm doing wonderful. I just can't wait for this game to actually go on by and uh... While you guys didn't have all the info that you needed, let's go through what the games are going to be today. And sadly, one of them had to be rescheduled. But we'll just run through it. We'll see what's going on and we'll see if you guys like it. So game one, Cyro, we've got Penn Trafford versus Berlin Brothers Valley. So again, this is week one of season three. So we don't really, much, uh, don't really know much of what's going to go down. We're excited to see these new players swap on into these teams and maybe blow us away with their wonderful performances. Game number two will be Salisbury's Elk versus the Forest Hills, which you guys have seen in the intro over there going on down. Excuse me for a bit of lag. Game 3 has sadly been cancelled due to unforeseen reasons. Bishop Carroll versus Gateway has gone. Mm -mm. And uh, game number 4 and the last one of today will be Windier versus Holidaysburg. So, even though we don't have that much info, what are your thoughts? What are your feelings? How do you think we're going to run through these games? Well, this is a high school league, so I'm definitely excited to see what... I guess the future generation of Rocket League players can bring to the table how they're going to play, what their tactics are, and just how sharp their mechanics are. Because I know in high school, there is a huge focus on development. And I'm excited to see maybe how polished some of these teams are, despite how young these players are going to be. Hey, well, I mean, man, I'm 17 as well. I'm in high school. Can't wait to see what my fellow peers are going to go down here and do. So, uh, yeah, I'm just all in all excited. Can't wait for the match to start. While we do wait for the transition to go on by and for us to actually join in the lobby to show you guys what's going to go down here, maybe we can get a bit of a view at the lineups that are going to be coming up here in a few seconds of Penn Trafford and Berlin Brothers Valley. Yeah, so with Rock League being a best of three format, momentum is going to have a pretty big factor of importance here. Because if you can come out of the game or out of the gate strong, you know, start your engines early and take that game one lead, it's a lot easier to close out a series. So I am looking forward to seeing which team can gain momentum early, how they're going to do that. And 
how they're going to play because there's so many different ways to play Rocket League. You can focus on aerials, you can focus on challenging, on the physical aspect of demoing your opponents. Mind you, if you and, do that, I, I may low-key hate you because I hate being demoed. But that's a personal thing. <laughs> oh, trust me. Up in, up in Plaid, by the way, because ranks have been all over the place for Rocket League so far right now. Um, up in the Plaid division where I am, people are just demoing each other. We're just playing for free-for-alls. Like, everything is chaos, right? And I'm pretty used to seeing it. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a lot of it here today. So I'm not going to hold a grunge against you, but I'm going to hold a grunge to gauge you <laughs> if you're going to go on again like this for the whole of the series. But again, it is a tactic, you know, being aggressive, playing up demos. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the best tactic of this, uh, well, quote unquote season, but day is uh, going to be so far and which one is going to come out on top. Yeah, coming out on top, starting your season off strong is always an important factor and i talked about momentum in the early game of a series and transitioning that through but you also have to look at that from a season perspective as well starting off on the right foot on the right pedal it, it's just such a beneficial way to set yourself up for success later on down the road because if you start off you, you know a bit slow then you have to make up that ground somewhere else in the season and that puts more pressure on you and being yeah. under pressure, despite being a good song, it's not always fun. It's definitely not, Syro, it's definitely not. But, you know, teams have to live with that. Teams have to uh, calculate for that. And the more you go on through this, the more you'll be like, okay, it's the time. I can't mess up. We're going to get in game. We're going to do our best. But this is 3v3s, right? It's not 2v2s. It's not 1v1s. Tactics are going to be completely different. And the way that people approach the game in the sense of, hey, how are we going to be rotating? How are we going to take this pinch shot? How are we going to go and uh, try to set this up? How are we actually going to play this out? This is what's important behind the team. And since this is a high school league, you know, I'm not expecting the, these teams to be at professional levels. I'm not expecting these teams to be even at varsity levels, you know, because we've got their in the varsity level stuff. We've got coaches, we've got team schedules, we've got practices. While you're in high school, don't really have the time for that. Or if you do, you might not always be aligned with your teammates to actually be able to continue on this grind and keep on going 24-7, practicing and working towards, you know, just Rocket League. So who knows? It's uh, all just going to be hearsay and uh, what we're going to be seeing next of uh, the few next games that we have to watch. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it there. Having the resources to support your growth is absolutely massive. And I know in my neck of the woods up here in Canada, high school esports hasn't quite taken off yet. Some of the colleges are now starting to adopt them and get competitive. But really, it's interesting to see how it is at the high school level, because while these players are in some terms esports athletes, they're also student athletes, which means that school and the studies have to come first. And that does take up a lot of your time and it can contribute to burnout. Now, with it being the start of the season, I am not expecting any burnout from these players. But as the season develops, that can be a contributing factor, which we will have to watch. And I know we have talked a lot about the current, the infrastructure and the future even. But really, I'm just excited to get into these games as soon as possible because Rocket League is always such a high octane sport that waiting for anything kind of sucks true true but um well not like we can do anything about it but we're gonna have to be waiting on here for just a bit longer so don't mind us go grab your popcorn if you forgot anything grab your water stay hydrated remember but we're gonna move into a quick five minute breaks until we get everyone into the lobby and we bring you guys the games you wanted to watch so until then don't go anywhere and we'll be right back Okay. Well, well, here we are. We are in game one here between the Berlin Brothers Valley and Penn Trafford. Now, they are color coordinated, which is good to see, so it keeps it nice and easy for us. So it seems like Penn has a little bit of offensive pressure in the early 
early seconds of this game but a great shot there hits the far post and that will bounce out accordingly but so far so far so good so far so good indeed it looks like uh we're trying out here you know feeling each other out trying some rotation trying some shots over there i see that we're getting uh nice little dodges and uh oh already the first goal is gonna be hit on over okay didn't see that happening let's see what yeah, it was ah. a a weak defensive touch led to the opportunity for pen there and they just needed a slight touch of their own to get that one in but right now they are one up so it is going to be on the berlin players to come back into this game so we do see a great pass there for the pen players but of a bit of a weak touch so it doesn't get too far but it comes in off the corner for a centering play that challenge does ultimately put it back in the corner there and it's the pen players once again with the offensive pressure indeed it is and uh I guess while we are waiting over here for everybody to get their roles going on here, I'll just go through some of the players as I get to see them. So we got Burb, we got Stepper over there trying to get... Oh, actually, Burb even scored one. Okay, very, very nice. I was uh, going in through everybody, but it looks like that nice little flick on the aerial managed to hit it right in the center of the uh, goal. So, uh... Where's... We saw some of the Berlin players there, Spectral Flash, but being down 2-0, they definitely have to step it up. They do have time on the clock, so all is not lost. But so far, they've just been stuck in their own zone, and, well, Step Bro just puts a third one in oh for God. the side of Penn Trafford. They are absolutely demolishing it, and they're starting out strong in this best of five. I think, like, um, they're trying to play the mental game, right? They're trying to get their morale up, get the enemy's morale, just go all the way down Berlin here. Have to come up with something to actually just uh, get back at the game here. But there are still three minutes. You've got a lot of time to, uh, as some of you put it, mess it up if you are a uh, Penn Trafford over here. Ooh, so we see a bit of a double whiff there coming out of both players, or both teams, I should say. And so it is going to be a centering pass here, and that does just get forced into the net there with the collapsing pen player there. And when you crash the net, you crash it hard, and they did it well. Indeed, they did. And we're going to have to move on to the next first touch over here, which is going to be a goal start for both these teams. And it looks like it's still going to go in the favor of Penn Trafford. Sure, it's going in here, but the aerials are hitting. Everything is going smoothly right here for the yellowish, perp, uh, yellowish uh, orange team. I'm so colorblind. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, well, just play it safe and go with yellow right now, because when sure. you get into those ish colors, then things can get messy. But this game is starting to turn out messy for the Berlin players as they have not been able to find any offensive pressure. So, but as I say that, they do get a ball on the near post here that is up off the backboard. And this could be an opportunity, but the bicycle flip mix misses and Penn is able to clear the net. And now they have a golden opportunity for themselves, but they put that just a little bit high, then off the far post. And oh. Penn, they are coming hard now for the side of the Ber <laughs> for Berlin. Did you see how Berlin was about to lose that just a rolling ball at like five kilometers per second going into the net? <laughs> they were about to miss it. Now we've got Spectre Flash over there bouncing it back away and uh, playing it still at the middle of the road. And look at him, he's going in once again, blocked it away. And, but it looks like Penn Trafford are just playing this one very, very aggressively. They know they've got the high ground, they're trying to play around it. And it's kind of working out. Kind of working out. Yeah, it, it seems that Penn has solidified their lead. And as I say that, they <laughs> score the fifth. Step Bro, definitely an offensive menace here in this first game. And it's... I'm going to say it's a little bit dire straits here for Berlin for game one anyways. Because a minute 42 left on the clock and does not leave a lot of time left. Okay, so let's put this in perspective. You, Cyro, were in a Rocket League game. You were playing against Penn Trafford and L5-0. The question is, would you FF? Would I FF? I would probably say so, but in competitive <laughs> matches, you play until the clock runs out because miracles do happen, lightning strikes, 
at least twice, hopefully maybe five times in this game. But Penn Trafford <laughs> is just continuing with his offensive pressure. And their shots are going high, oh they're going wide, but they are still there. And the Berlin Brothers Valley need to band together as a set of brothers to come up with something. But with yeah. a minute left on the clock, it is going to be tight here if they can generate any offense. So most okay. likely I'm expecting a regroup for game two. And probably Penn Trafford is just going to run down the clock here. Probably, probably. And that's the smartest choice, right? You don't want to drag it out with even more goals. And uh, I saw one of the players here from Penn Trafford try and got that double touch into the goal. But now they're setting it up. Oh, no, they missed it. But it's all good. They're just stalling for time. 30 seconds left. And uh, I think we're going to be seeing a end of the first round over here. Oh, as I say that. So, Berg does <laughs> score there to put them up 6 nothing, And it was a very, or is, a very oppressive and smothering match here out of the Penn Trafford team, which is just great to see this early on. Hopefully, Berlin players are able to regroup because I think they were just caught on their back tires this game and weren't quite able to get out of the mud, get out of their defensive end. But, but hopefully in the dying seconds they can score at least one game and gain some momentum going into oh the next Oh my god! That up! I cast a curse them. <laughs> you did. You really did. Look at this setup. It was wonderfully executed and he just came in there and absolutely whacked it into the back of the net. That's how you do it. That's really how you do it. Step Bro absolutely demolished it. Yep, so once again, the eighth face-off of the game, I believe. And it is just going to be the ball winding down. Same with the clock. And there it is. Penn Trafford picks up game one of this best of five series against the Berlin Brothers Valley. Indeed, GG's. So for our first little round over here, we've seen uh, what these two teams are capable of. We've seen Tepro, Riaguya, and Burb absolutely demolishing just Berlin right here. And uh, well, let's just hope it's not going to be a clear 3-0. I want to see some competitors that I want to see Berlin coming back to it and trying to regroup, trying to rebuild, and trying to see what they can do against this absolute behemoth of what seems to be the tech high school league yeah yeah as you saw that the pen team they came out full force they came out engines rubbing and they definitely dominated that first game having seven goals there is uh is a testament to their prowess overall and we see the shots it was it was kind of nutty there 14 shots for the pen team and unfortunately berlin they were struggling so much in their defensive end that they racked up zero shots. And that will definitely be something that has to change moving into game two. Yeah, but we didn't fully go on through the lineups to the rosters. Uh, the last game that we had the chance, I know it's a bit late. But while we do have something to go off now, finally, I do think that we can start talking about it now a bit. So for the side of the absolute behemoth of Penn Trafford, we saw Riaguya, we saw Stepbro, and we saw Burb absolutely demolishing one of it. Absolutely demolishing the enemy team, right? Because as we're gonna get into this second game, we're gonna be seeing them be as aggressive as they've been before. They played for a lot of demos, they played for just a lot of all in all aggressiveness, right? They they knew their place and they kept on at it. And I would just wanna see more of that. Yes, and the game did did get uh pre-started, we'll say, so it, it might fine. need to be restarted real quick. But it just means we get to see these players do a little bit of warm up, flex their skills, and we do see that spectral flashes in there. Same with Nightmare, and the players—they're just going to enjoy themselves right now. So we saw Penn come out of the gates swinging. Oh yeah. How do you feel the series is going to go after seeing how Game One went? Well, if Penn are going to be keeping up their tra their momentum, right? If they're going to be keeping up this great gameplay that we've seen from all of these players, if we keep on seeing uh, just Burb and Stepbro playing with each other as an amazing duo and Riaguya in the back on defense, then uh, I definitely think that they've got all the chances in the world to actually beat some of the varsity teams that we got looking forward in Division 1. 
As on the other hand, though, Syro, what do you think of Berlin? How, what can they change over here to kind of step things up, kind of change how uh, we've been seeing this game go? Well, the Berlin players, they definitely need to solidify their defense and then work on challenging the Penn players because they're giving Penn so much time to set up plays. Like right now, there needed to be a stronger <laughs> contest on the backboard there. Now, somehow that ball does not find the back of the net. But we might have we had a bit of a rule one situation there with iconic and step bro. But oh my God, it is gonna be the pen player doing a bit of a fake there, causing the Berlin player nightmare, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it was iconic to commit going high and the ball went in low. Yep, and uh speaking of nightmare, iconic Caden and right now uh, Spectre Flash. These three have got to get a move on because it looks like they're cutting off uh, each other's rotation and look, they, they're missing easy air shots over there that you should definitely not miss as uh, you are coming in here with the competitive scene. You want to just hit as many of the shots that you can hit. And uh, in this scenario, it looks like Pen Trapper just do not miss. They literally don't miss. Demoing away, Step Bro is now trying to line it up, center it up for Burb. Thankfully, Iconic's gonna be there. Yeah, now we do see that once again, Penn is setting up in the offensive end. And I'm expecting them to have pretty good bowl because they have larger pads, but Nightmare goes up for it. Just out of boost, so he can't quite get the contest there. But Step Bro is there for the touch off the backboard. Burb oh set it up God. wonderfully, and Step Bro was there, to, was there for the finish. Look at that. That is teamwork, my friend. That is what I call amazing gameplay. Just hitting it off on top of the backboard and uh, then it goes straight into your friend's friend, uh, face. You don't even have to do anything. You just have to wait for him to ram it in and that's exactly what he did. And uh, I guess that's not a good analogy with somebody like the name of Stepro, is it? <laughs> uh, it's questionable considering uh, the league we're playing in right now. But yeah. The, the Berlin players, they had an opportunity, but Stepro with an early challenge just cuts off the Berlin players at their knees and stopping the momentum. Oh, poor and, Iconic. And it's unfortunate to see that Penn is just able to throw everything at the net. And the Berlin players just quite, just quite can't find the touch needed to make the save and perhaps generate offense. I don't think there... Uh, I think there's def a clear rank difference so far from what I can tell. In between these two teams, just like here, nobody was down to the goal. At least one person from Berlin tried to spectral fresh. Can't do anything by himself. Iconic there as well. But yeah, look at that. The, gore, the goal just clean, just empty. Easy for Pen Trafford to hit their fifth goal at minute two right now and uh, probably take away the second game as well. Yes, now this is a bit of a runaway game here, but Spectro is on offensive end for a bit. Can't quite find his follow-up touch, turns a little bit too quickly there, and a good potential passing play there, but Ragu is up for that. He knocks it to the defensive end. Burr picks this up in the corner, and he's going to walk oh. back in. Good shot there, but Spectro with the save. And the Berlin players could be finding their wheels right now. Iconic should go up for this. Oh my god, Burb hit it. Unfortunately, the ball just comes out from the wall there, providing a good opportunity for Burb to put it in himself. Wow, I am watching just a massacre unfolding right here. Currently, Pan Trafford. Burb literally 1v3 that in one, right? So. At this point, you can see the skill difference also in the cars that they're using. That fast touch there was wonderfully played by Burb trying to hit it in for himself yet again. Does not manage to kind of set it up, but I guess this one goes in. Step bro. Okay, yeah, Pen Trafford are just styling right here. They're, they don't even care anymore. They're going in for all of the plays and they're hitting every single one. But I was saying that you can just tell the difference in skill by the cars they've chosen right here, right? You, we can see a lot of Octanes coming out of Pen Trafford. Whereas, uh, well, Berlin's cars are a bit questionable, don't you think, Sarah? They can be, but as long as you're comfortable with your car, it can be a benefit. Because each car will have a slightly different hitbox, which means you can get slightly different angled shots and use that to your advantage. But it comes down to practice, mechanics, and being comfortable on it. 
But with that said, we do oh my we do God. see Pen Burb doing fairly well for himself, putting in the eighth one for his team. Just a good collection there in the midfield. Flicks that up and over. Pretty straightforward coming to the Pen players. Their mechanics and fundamentals are solid. So, you know, I'm trying to be an optimist. I'm trying to be like, okay, they can do it. They can mount a comeback, and it's not impossible. But the way it's been playing right now, Penn Trafford are just absolutely going to run away with it home. Like, they, they, they're not playing around. They just want this win fast, and uh, they want to assure it, because it's currently nine goals up. Got a minute left, and I think they're going to start toying with a ball right around now, so... Yes. It's, uh, you actually finish out your games quicker if you aren't running up the score. And <laughs> That's not going to happen. Unfortunately, Penn is just throwing everything at the net and they are finding their ways in. I think Berlin may be struggling from a communication issue because they seem to be over committing on the kickoffs. And that's where a lot of these shots are suddenly coming through for Penn. Oh. But there we do see Spectral with a decent stop there. Puts that one up high. Burb is there to clear the ball. Iconic gets the follow-up touch there. And overall, it's fairly good. We do see the Berlin players are a little too grouped right here, which could be an issue, but they do get the defensive touch needed. And it looks like a little bit of hesitancy coming out of the Penn players. And now it's strike from Iconic. Oh. And he finds the bounce off the near post. So Berlin not going to be shut out two games in a row here. No, no, don't, don't get too happy here because Iconic shouldn't have gotten that goal. <laughs> Ryuga just put it in the goal for him. But I guess Berlin have started to come up here a bit and uh, give us a bit of a hope. At least one goal up in the rankings over there for them. But this is like the initiation for week number one of the Tech High School League. So what we're seeing here, I hope, is not going to be a... Um, well, just a uh, premonition for the rest it's, of the league. It can set the standard or the bar for the other teams to meet. Yeah. Right now, Penn is making a statement. And that's exactly <laughs> what they should be doing early on. They're setting themselves up as, hey, we want to win this league from the get-go. Everyone else is going to be our challengers. And with that said, Penn Trafford does actually pick up game two in their best of five series and moves to match point against the Berlin Brothers Valley. Indeed we are, Syro, and we're gonna be moving into the next game in just a second here. But honestly, like, what can you even say more about Penn Trafford? They, they're, they're just playing this one wonderfully, and there's been so many good goals as well as lucky goals coming out of them. Just kickoff goals on and off. We've seen like four or five only this game. And uh, there was one goal that I wanted to single out, which was <laughs> actually Burb just heading into uh, Riaguya. And uh, he didn't even need to move. Like, the ball was in front of him, Riaguya was between Burb and the ball, and Burb just went in full throttle and managed to get the ball into the net. So I guess that's just how easy it was for Penn Trafford to go on here and uh, how big of a statement they are actually putting out forth. Yeah, so right now we do see that the Berlin team, they're down 0-2. They did score a goal in the second game, which is great to see. It shows that they're still trying to play the game. They Their mental is being under pressure right now. It's being severely tested because getting blown out in two back-to-back -back games really does affect someone's mental. So them being able to play through that, get a goal, is absolutely fantastic to see from a high school team. And hopefully, game three, now that they have a little bit of confidence back in their play they can maybe look to score a few more challenge Penn a little bit more often but that yep. said Penn is not perfect yeah poke the dragon He's... over there a bit <laughs> not even necessarily poke the dragon we've seen most of the offense from Penn come out of step bro and burb which means that their third man while uh, Ryuga does come up a little bit I'm going to say doesn't rotate properly, just sits behind the midfield line, collects any loose balls, which can be a valid strategy. But it also means that the rotations aren't necessarily what they should be or could be. So there's definitely room for Penn to improve overall as this season goes. But they, as we've witnessed here, 
they're starting off strong and game three is now underway here the kickoff was about as even as you can get and that's going to be an early shot out of bird oh. and a great save out of iconic finding the touch off that crossbar so right as you were pointing out that Ryuga maybe was playing just a bit more defensively, maybe it was one of their tactics, trying to have one man in the back as a goalkeeper and uh, the duo here doing what they do best. It looks like uh, they've changed it up. Ryuga is now in a forward position, trying out the rotation along with these teammates over on to Penn Trafford. As uh, it looks like Burb still tries to set something up over here. Stepro puts it right down the middle, almost is going to be blocked away by Iconic. And it's still just a, currently a battle for the ball that Burb's going to win straight down into the center of the goal, going in 1 0 for Penn Trafford. Yes, and we're definitely seeing Penn cut their rotations short because they have so much offensive pressure. And this means that there is a window of opportunity for the Berlin Brothers Valley players to send a oh. defeat call. But they need to secure their pickoffs a little bit better than that, so that way they can have that opportunity. But a good follow-up there by Stepro, and Nightmare was just a little bit wide on his touch, which gave Stepro the clear shooting lane in midfield. And remember, this is as competitive as this level is going to get, right? We're looking at high school level. They're trying their best, right? And as you said before we started this out, oh god, this is a pretty nasty shot going in under the car. But as I was saying, as you said beforehand, these players are focusing on growth. And I think Berlin are going to have a lot to learn after this game passes on by. Because at the moment, it's still looking like an absolute Penn Trafford domination coming in here for game number three but i do think they have a lot to learn from this and i do think that uh, they're gonna think long and hard and watch this vod a few times to understand what's going on here and what's going wrong especially when the backman like riaguya here is hitting these shots yes only your enemy can show you where you are weak and right now pen is giving that lessons in bucket fulls or wheelbarrow fulls maybe even a dump truck full but regardless, Berlin Brother Valleys, they're still sticking with it. It's good to see. And Iconic does get the save there, which is good. So this is a potential opportunity for Flash. Doesn't quite get the read, but Iconic is there with the follow-up touch. And Sepro is back to the defense. A good demo there coming out of the Berlin players. And that was one of their best opportunities of the day so far. Indeed it was. Sadly, they couldn't capitalize enough on it, but I did like the initiation on that demo. To actually maybe get him away from the goal and get it in nice iconic being the MVP currently for Berlin stopping away two important shots over here from Penn Trafford and it looks like Ragria is trying to set something up messes it up a bit and uh, Berlin are looking to be playing this one even more aggressively step is just being thrown around all over the place and he's gonna be forced into missing that well I, I want to say a crucial shot but really we are 4-0 up Pen Trafford yeah. don't really need any more goals. Yeah, and right now we're witnessing just step bro over commit in the offensive zone. He was probably for the last 20 seconds there on zero boost trying to manipulate the ball. And that can be a weakness to exploit. That is, I would say, poor macro decision making on the side of Pen with them not rotating in and out properly. So they can play better. And I think they should, regardless of their opponent's level. But we do see a pinch out of step row. Sends that one sailing across the field. And this could be a bit of a transition play for the Berlin players. But step row comes through the midfield and puts that one back into the offensive end here. And yet again, I think uh, you definitely see the mechanical difference in between these two teams. You see how Stepro and Ryuga just come up and follow up for the ball. Burb is always ready in position to maybe third touch it if somehow his teammates manage to actually get blocked away by the Berlin defensive. I don't think that's going to happen here. This uh, real nice setup that Berlin were trying to get is going to be blocked away yet again by Stepper over there, not over committing and actually playing it safe, being all the way in the back, having his boost. And this is just the difference then between these two teams, I think. Yeah, we do see Iconic coming off that far post. Ooh. It was a little bit... A little bit unfortunate there, not finding the defensive touch. And something that I have learned is that when you come off the post like that, it is often dubbed the noob killer because it throws 
your position off, it sends your car tumbling, and it means it's harder to recover. And we just saw what happened there with Iconic. But now Burb goes up for the aerial touch. This one looks to be on target, oh. and Iconic just can't quite find the touch. And that's Penn Trafford's seventh goal of the game. And you know what's sad about that? Berlin actually set that one up because you saw Spectral Flash going in there and trying to get that double touch after the kickoff, right? He tried to go for it, but he just didn't move up high enough. And uh, sadly, that cost him yet another goal, 7-0 currently for Penn Trafford. And, uh, well, you've got two minutes. I hope we're going to be seeing a few goals coming out of Berlin, but in my mind, I do think that uh, it's pretty much Ooh. GG. Okay, so Iconic oh. with a shot on net there. It's it's tumbling forward, and that did cause all three pen plays there to go for that defensive goal-saving touch. So Berlin not without their opportunities in this game, and a great clearing attempt there gets to the midfield. A miss out of the pen plays does create a little bit of confusion, but Iconic is there to get the touch into the corner. And so far, it looks like the Berlin players, they're starting to adapt. They're getting a few more touches, but the crossbar is there for the save on Burb. Ryug is there as well. They are crashing oh. that with everything they have, but Iconic is up to the task and does make the defensive play. And that's just great to see out of the Berlin players right now. And yet again, we find ourselves, when we look at the Berlin side, talking about Iconic here, right? He's... Not necessarily a ball chaser in my mind. He's definitely the one that has the most potential coming out of this blue side team. Because even though he missed that save, there wasn't anything he could do. His rotation was cut off. There was no way he could get all the way back in there and try to block this one away. But see, we've seen him attempt the most things. We've seen him stop the most shots. We've seen him go for the most kickoffs. And we've seen him actually just being the most aggressive one out of the team. And as I've always said for any game that you play, just start off playing aggressively. You'll learn to play defensively in time. Just go in all the way and you'll learn along the way, right? That's what I think at least. Yep, and we do see that the Berlin players, they have been throwing everything, including the kitchen sink and the exhaust pipe. Oh yeah. At the Penn players, just to try and get something going. But the Penn players, they're manipulating the ball fairly well, and clearly they're winning the aerial battle, which is why they're able to generate so much offensive pressure, because they're going uncontested in that area of play. So, while this game is only down at 10 seconds, our next one is going to be Salisbury's Elk versus Forest Hills. Which hopefully won't go as wrong, I guess, as this one. It hasn't gone wrong, but it's definitely been one-sided. <laughs> yes, one-sided is the way to put it here. We didn't know quite what to expect. I didn't expect a, a one-sided performance, I think but that's I. okay. It's a high school junior varsity league. As I said in the intro, it's a bit of an open league, so the ranks, they're going to be all over the place. And oh you can see the Penn team finish the series off with a bang as they scored their 11th goal of game three. And what a goal it was as well. Very well set up. And, uh, <laughs> well, it was just about to be taken on over by Burb there. But all in all, Penn Trafford, absolute legends. I think they are ones to look out for definitely in this league. They are going to be a behemoth to fight off against. And speaking of fighting, in the next 30 minutes, we're going to be having a fight. You guys are going to be having your own fight as you're going to be waiting in excitement for the next game that's about to come up. But uh, yeah, as I said before, it's going to be Salisbury's Elk versus the Forest Hills. Definitely don't go anywhere. Grab anything you need, and uh, I'll hand it on over to you, Sarah, if you want to have to say anything before we move on into the next one. Yeah, you, you summed it up pretty well there. It was a one-sided stomping by Penn Trafford. A great way to start the season. And Berlin, they definitely have work to do. But with this game VOD, they will learn so much. And I have no doubt that they will improve throughout the course of the season. So as you said, we are going to see the Salisbury Elk and the Forest Hill teams facing up next. So I believe until then, we are just going to throw it to intermission right now because I don't know about you, but I could use some water. I know. Yeah, yeah, I could use some water, get a drink. 
And with that said, we are going to throw it to an intermission right now. See you guys. Got the intro for us. Well, here we are for the second series of the day on stream with Haldisberg versus Winber. And well, we see that these two teams are going at it right away. Winber is in white, Haldisberg is in blue. And so far the action is pretty, pretty steady. Indeed it is, and it looks like we're going to be starting out strong. Finally, we are getting a game today, Syro. And look at that, it's going to be a good one because both teams seem to be knowing what they're doing. And Winbear definitely are starting the prediction game out strong. There you go. Starting out with a nice little 1-0 wave esports here. Just getting it up at the top with the goal. Starting things out right. I think uh, our prediction is going to be... Be correct here if we're gonna keep on going like that. The kickoff as well to start it off. Today is a good day to be playing Rocket League, it seems like. Ooh. Okay, that was a good offensive bump there by the Haldisberg player. But it's the esports guy up in the air first. So I trolley man is gonna guide this one to the corner, but without boost, not much can do it. And young bro is oh. there, but a great touchdown coming out of the Wingbird player. WASD Esports, look at him. Oh, that, that was just a beautiful touchdown there. Great to see. And uh, Holly, Holly uh, my, my tongue is already tied for some reason. But either way, blue side here, they need to play that backboard defense and get up there because these touches should not be able to get touched down like that. But Esports once again is in the air. And I think Random was almost trying to prevent a uh, team goal there from the looks of it. I think so, I think so. Well, it always happens, you know. These things definitely are part of the Rocket League experience, I'd say. But we're going to be moving into it and already 3-0 for the white side team on the right over there. Only four minutes. Uh, uh, only a lot of minutes going on here. Still left in the game. It looks like Holidaysburg is gonna have to try their hardest to try and equal up the score, but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Random, two very nice already uh, fake outs going out there from his side. Wave, WASD, not Wave. WASD is trying to center it down. Well played, almost attempted over there by Winter. Okay, so Random picks up this ball in the midfield. He got to right over the wall. He's gonna come out the Ooh. wall here, and it does. Oh, it was on net there, but a trolley man was there to pick it up. Wades with a good defensive touch, because if he missed that, that was probably it. So that's a centering play there. He whiffs on it, but it is cleared out regardless. So Random picks this ball up in the corner. He's going to center wow. it with the flip reset. Wow. We definitely see the mechanics here coming out of Winber. And just like that, they put up their fourth goal of the game, and oh, they're making a statement here early on. Oh my god, Random is insane. Absolutely insane. I, I yeah. love these mechanics already. We're getting an equal fight. Well, equal as much as you can say it, because it is 4-0, and currently Winber are just taking the show, taking all the spotlight. And I do hope that we get to see Holidaysburg throwing it back a bit. Like, look at that, I trolley man knows what he's doing he's getting a good demo over there and it's right down in center nobody's on the goal and it's oh. going to be blocked away just by a tad bit over there trying their hardest but they're not going to get it for now at least centering it back up again and uh, nobody's there on the backup yes but still that is great offensive pressure coming out of holiday birds players oh. there and just as i say that a great pass towards the center there and random just slots that in under the crossbar absolutely fantastic play there yeah who <laughs> this man what what rank would you give him so far i mean uh, his plays certainly aren't random despite the name so i wouldn't say he's living up to his name and i'd probably say he's somewhere in the champion level there especially oh. being able to dribble like that maybe maybe great champion but he's definitely he's definitely oh showing up my. strong here the dribbling skills on this man, the aerials, everything. 
setups. He's perfect. He is perfect. I have not okay, seen let's a single let's mistake come out of him. Get too crazy for now. Here for now. With the P word throwing out. Because perfect is in the eye of the beholder. And well, they haven't quite been perfect yet. There's still time on the clock here for Holzenberg. And a great cross map play there for Winberg as they just pass it across one another. So Hazard with the clear attempt doesn't quite get it out there. But I, Charlie Man, with the good defensive touch, does get it out towards the midfield. Young Bro sets, or Robo, sets it up for the midfield. But this Ooh. is an opportunity for Holzenberg. And they do get it in off that near post. Let's go. You see, it's not all about Winber. I, I'm, I like the game that I'm seeing because, sure, while well, we have MVPs coming out left and right for both sides, we now see Holidaysburg kind of stepping it up. There's two minutes left on the clock and they've got their first goal. They're not going down without the fight. And it looks like the fight is going to come straight to them here in a couple of seconds. Yeah, so Brandon with a good touch there just puts that one up because they know that Winberg has the advantage in the air. And as I say that, I Charlie Man gets that aerial touch there, puts it high, puts it up off the backboard into oh the corner. But Random, he's spinning, he's swirling, he gets the flip reset in. But a good contest out of Hazard there keeps the ball from anywhere dangerous. And now we're starting to see some life out of Holidaysburg here. But really, all eyes are on Winberg here as they are playing high and fast. I am fast indeed, and it looks like it's uh, definitely paying off really, really well here. Going back after you've uh, lost all your boost there, it was a very nice attempt for a double the touch into pinch over there coming from, I think, uh, WASD Esports. Ooh, I trolly man with a little flicks. We do a little trolling here, I see. <laughs> Onto the enemy team, trying to fake them out a bit. Seems like it didn't work out fully this time, but... He's trying to set something up, and he's telling his teammates, look guys, we gotta get this ball in control, because currently, Winbear are taking all of our spotlight, and it's currently not in our favor. So what can we change? What can we do? I'll leave it up to you. Ooh. Well, there isn't much that they can do except to start challenging the Winbear players more frequently. And there just as go. I say that, they get that offensive bump, force the out-of-position play, and they take advantage of the open net that leaves. Indeed they are, and that's the second goal for them. They're on a roll, but 20 seconds left to go. I think this first game is going to go on for Winberg, but we're definitely going to see a way more closely contested next few games. And I hope that we're going to be seeing it, because it looks like they've, uh, they've got their priority straight. Holidaysburg are going in for these uh, aggressive plays against Random, as they've seen that he's the main problem currently for Winberg. So it is the dying seconds of this game, and Winberg is just going to let this ball kind of touch down, but I think Holdaysburg wanted one more goal there. But with that said, Winberg picks up game one here in their best of five series, and it was a pretty one-sided performance there. 6-2 the final score, and it was an onslaught of shots coming out of Winberg there, with 14 total shots compared to the three shots out of Holdaysburg. But either way, it was great to see that Holzeberg team got a couple more goals. They got two. They showed some life in them. They made some saves. They had some decent positioning. They always had someone in net or rotating to the net. So they were able to make those defensive plays when needed. Because they still stopped a fair amount of shots. Well said. Well said indeed. And, uh, well... I think uh, their W definitely stands strong in their team logo currently for Winbear. But as we're going to be moving on to the next game, it's kind of seen that Holidaysburg have switched up their composition, they've switched up the way they play, and they saw, okay, they've got a really good guy in random, getting all the aerials, getting all the shots they need. But the true underdog here was WASD, in my opinion, because coming in from Winbear, he has gotten four goals, one huge assist, and we've only seen him go and go and go and be aggressive. Do you think this aggressiveness is too much coming in from Winber, or is it just enough that it can pass on by as not being a problem? Well, right now they definitely have the momentum, and their momentum is carrying them into the offensive zone fairly often and frequently, and they're maintaining possession, which is great to see. But enough of that, we're actually going to hop into game two here as both these teams are just looking to kick it off with some high octane action. 
And as I say that, Young is up. He puts it over for his teammate. Random is across the map. He doesn't quite find the touch to make it a shot on net, but that is going to be a clear out of eye trolley, man. And so far in the early seconds, there's no early goals, but oh. it's still fast pace. That might change in a second here. Random trying to set up something over there for WASD as Young Bro, Young Grobo, who we haven't been talking about as much. You know, he's kind of been there in the back, kind of just saving along Winbear for any mistakes that they might have. And uh, I think he's playing really, really well, but definitely not better than Random there with a wonderful aerial coming in yet again to block out Shredder Luke and uh, just completely dethrone all hope that Holidaysburg had for this first goal. Yeah, so Winberg dunked that one in. I, Charlie Man, went up for it, but was a little bit short. And, well, we saw how that one resulted. But with that said, the kickoff does actually go over to Holidaysburg here. And a bit of a Whoa. weird touch there, which caused the pitch to the far side. But Young Robo is there for the touch. He puts it on net a little bit too close. And now that ball comes out. And that's a dangerous touch. And that oh. is an own goal, which gets credited to Hazard. There was no way to stop that one. That's just unfortunate. That is really just unfortunate. I mean, yeah, look at that. F's in the chat. F's in the chat. Yeah, a few F's in chat would be appreciated for that one. But either way, a minute in, scores tied at one. Definitely a bit more of a competitive game this time around here. And once again, Holstenberg with another good offensive touch here. Strolly Man tried to get the dunk there, but couldn't quite find it. Young Robo tries to put it past Hazard there, but that wasn't going to happen. Hazard seems to be on point now. And so now it's a little bit more of a aerial display coming out of Winber, but that pass didn't quite find its mark as Random was coming in hot. I can't quite tell if I'm just imagining it or if uh, Random is playing a bit of a ball chaser there. I, I saw him uh, overtaking Young Grobo quite a few times trying to get a control of that ball when it could have just been left away and it would have been all fine and dandy, but maybe that is just my imagination. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking things here, watching on over and focusing and narrowing down on Winbear when there's a lot to talk about here for Holidaysburg as well. Look at them, they're trying to be so aggressive in a position that they just have to hold and they're trying to keep it going they're trying to work it out and uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily going their way but they're definitely making their best attempt now talk me through what just happened here because I was going on a completely different tangent yeah, so was just young robo had a great touch into the corner which centers the ball just away from the net and we saw was these sports there went up for it and just slotted that in right under the crossbar a great read on the direction of that ball and well he capitalized on it which puts winber up another goal so young robo trying to make a solo play here he centers that for a teammate who just isn't there so i charlie man actually gets the touch up puts her to esports but without boost not much can do tries to get the flick well i charlie man once again with the touch he puts it high off the backboard can they follow up on this and unfortunately, it just goes harmlessly into the corner. But a good clear here. And random? That was random. <laughs> that was indeed random. And now WASD Sports has the ball in his control. Young Grobo is going to take it back again. I trolley man. Thank he's there, right? He took it on over and blocked it away. Now we're down still to two minutes. We're closing into this uh, second game, and it looks like it's uh, an extremely close one. The ball control is all over the place, and it looks like Hollywoodsburg are trying to find their way across this different difficult terrain that they're running into, into this uh, wind bear, wind bear uh, pressure. But maybe things are going to change. Maybe now, as we're getting our rotations settled in, they're getting warmed up, and they're looking like... They're, they're starting to figure out the composition of Winbear here. It looks like they know who's going to go in for these uh, assists. They know who's going to line things up. And oh my Whoa. god, he's about to be a goal. That was a dangerous ball. Can he get that? No, he can't. So once again, it's WASD Esports with the goal here. Random wanted the dunk, but he wasn't getting it. So it was left for Esports to tidy it up. And Random trying to uh, get the credit steal, we'll say. Ah, it's fine. We would have credited WSB anyways, but... Oh, interesting there to leave out the kickoff to actually set it up for Young Grub over there. Who couldn't quite pinch it well enough with the ground there. Sadly, it did go into the favor of Holidaysburg. Now, ooh, 
very scary if you're double USD there, given it away to I Trolley Man, who you couldn't see because the ball is now going to be down into the left quarter field of this match, and it's going to go straight for a center up, but it's not going to happen yet. So there's okay. a lot of back and forths. So I Trolley Man with a good pass here, that's coming off the wall for potentially Hazard, but Esports with the touch. So he's able to clear that out to center field. Shredder Luke should be able to get the next touch, but Hazard picks that one up. And I think this ball goes harmlessly over to Random, but he's up in the air. He's trying to make something happen with a flip reset. Doesn't get the redirect he wants, so now it's up for Esports. And this one's out to the side here. Charlie Man with the shot on net. It's going to be a bit wide anyways, but Young is there for the extra protection. And so just like that, Holdysburg is showing that they can be a threat on the transition play. But with 30 seconds left on the clock, they're two goals down, and I guess they need a miracle to strike twice right now if they look to tie this game up and force an overtime. Yeah, it looks like Winbear are kind of moving on to this more defensive play, and they know they just got a trickle down that time, but they don't care. Esports going in there trying to set something up. Eight, oh. seven, six. Time is clear, uh, ticking down, and... I don't even have to see the, uh, the screen right here to know that game number two is going to go down to the blue and white side. Well played. Yes, so Winbird there, they did a fantastic job of controlling the overall pace of the game. Now, Hall of Sigurd, they did have... I, I, I would say their goal was a fortunate opportunity there because it was an own goal, I believe, this case. But regardless, their defense looked strong. They were definitely challenging Winber better this game. And you could just see that from the reduced opportunities that Winber had, the fewer shots on net, and overall just a fantastic job. So this was a closer game. And I expect if it keeps going this way, that game three might be even closer. But so far, Winber, they have put themselves on the match point and look to sweep the series in a clean 3-0. Indeed they have, indeed they have, Syro. And as we're going to be moving on to match point here for Winber, I Trolley Man has absolutely been an MVP currently for Holidaysburg. He's absolutely blocked away so many goals. I'm just sad to see that the rotation is there. It's definitely there compared to the first game that we've seen. But I, don't, I still don't think it's enough. There's not enough aggressiveness coming out of Holidaysburg. They're just playing onto their side of the field. And you've seen that go wrong so many times. But if you've got people like WASD, people like uh, Random going in there for those reels and actually hitting those impossible angles. So I guess uh, going into game three, we're going to have to see what's going to be changed. Yeah, I don't know if much needs to be changed here, but they crashed oh. the net early on and Random is the one to first touch it. And so they're up 1-0 in the first six seconds of the game with a great cross pass there and Random, well, that, that, that was just excellent execution there on the tail end of that play. Nothing else to it, really. Yeah, you couldn't really block it away because there was nothing to block. Who expected it to go into the right side, top right side of the net? Nice uh, block over there by iTrolly Man to actually take it away from the trajectory that it was going on straight into your net now moving on towards the opposite side of the field finally we're seeing some action going in here for holidaysburg as well trying to make the dream work but it's not going to be that is easy yes one thing that winberg has done fairly consistently so far in this game is try to make the team play get the centering pass get the centering touch and rely on your second man coming up to finish that but they've also, as we're seeing, gone for quite a few of the aerial plays as well. But that ball, oh, it bounces Ooh. straight up off the post there. And this could be a potential dunk here. But Esports comes out of the back of the net to get the touch there. So great defense out of Winbird there. Oh, that one's off the crossbows. I had to hold my breath there for a moment. Yeah. So I Charlie Man with the solid shot here gets cleared. And that could be another own goal, but Esports oh is God. once again there to keep that out of his team's own net there. So Winber, you could also be your team's own worst enemy in this series. I mean, there was an own goal coming in for game number two, so that could be completely true, but I'm just more concerned about how are Holidaysburg supposed to get any goals in when you've got 
esports playing like that. Like those are two extremely hard saves to do, and he pulled them off effortlessly going off into it. And the team play is just wonderful. You can definitely see that Winber is going golden. They're trying to win this tournament, and they get they're trying out everything. Fleet presets, just power plays, coming in team plays, and now random, an absolute solo play to go into it. Just look at that. I just want to see the replay. Oh, look at this. Gets it redirected, and then just shoots it straight into goal, passes it along, and doesn't even care about anyone else. Yeah, and Shredder Luke was in a tough place there, because that looked like it could have gone in without hitting the post, so we had to go hard into the net to make sure it popped out. But in doing so, it forced him out of position so he couldn't get the second touch coming out of random. But that said, this is an offensive opportunity as all three members of Winber collapse on the ball there to try and get it out. A little bit of a of commit there, but they are able to transition effectively. So random has the ball, he puts it on target, but Hazard should harmlessly put this one into the corner. Yeah, it looks like Holly Deesberg are just too scary to actually advance from the halfway point of the map here because, well, once you do, you leave everything uncontested, you leave your goal uncontested, and who knows what random or WASD esports might pull off here, like a complete just rollout in the aerial game. I think definitely the aerial side of things is won by Winbear, and that's why it's so hard for Holidaysburg to actually be aggressive. They're just playing defense here and hoping for the best, but I don't think this is the best that they can pull off. I think they're scary to show us what they're made of, and that's honestly just really sad to see because there's just so much pressure coming out of Winbear. Yeah, Holidaysburg could be a little oh. flush there and haphazard not quite reading the right ball touch there and so with that esports does get the bump into the goal as well so that puts winber up three nothing right now and with two minutes or just under two minutes left on the clock it is now on to hollisburg to throw the kitchen sink at winber right now go take the win as best you can challenge every ball you can and hopefully it's enough to prolong this series but Shredder Luke he has an opportunity and it's just a little bit wide as the ball got ahead of him yeah Shredder Luke here Shredder Luke here has gotten a lot of opportunities to attempt to change things for Holidaysburg right and every time it's not necessarily been his fault this time sure he messed up a bit but everyone does it's just there's not a lot of these opportunities and you can't afford to be missing them when you're playing against such a good team like Winber here who have got exactly everything down to a T. They know what they're doing and they know how to execute it. They've got experience in this and they've definitely got good teamwork. So my question is, coming in here for Holidaysburg, you're trying new things out. Is this the time to just be defaulting to what you do best? Maybe continuing on to play these defensive routes or you've only got a minute left. I mean, just play as aggressively as you can. Yeah, they need to go aggressive here. And as I said, throw the kitchen sink at them, throw the spare tire wrench, throw the spare tire even. You don't need it if you can't win this game. And what they've been doing, their tried and true, hasn't been working so far. So they do need to change it up here. They need to just get off the ground. Go for those aerial plays. It's okay to miss right now because there's nothing else that you can lose. Mm. But as I say that, they get beat in the corner and that centering pass makes it through for the fourth goal for Winber right now. So in this complete best of five series coming in here between Holidaysburg and Winber, besides that own goal coming out of, uh, I think it was uh, WSD Esports, did Holidaysburg just hit one goal into Winber's net? I think it was only one, right? Well, no, they scored a couple times in the very first series. So they're oh, okay. doing fairly well as a team. They've definitely kept the score lower than what we saw in the first series of the day, which is good to see as well. But in the last few seconds here, it's going to be Winberg closing it out to win the best of five series against Hol Holidaysburg here on the TEC High School Week. So all in all, we finished out the last game for today and thank you guys so much for watching. But I do kind of want to talk a bit about the whole today because there were two matches that we unfortunately couldn't see and well as a uh, this game finished out in a 3-0 victory coming in from Winber which is unfortunate to see because Holidaysburg definitely played it well 
what do you think, Syro? What do you think? Do you think Winbear is the better team, or do you think that the first game that we've seen coming out for on top of uh, Penn Trafford, do you think they're the better team? Who would win in the matchup between these two? Honestly, I'm going to say Winbear is the better team of the four teams we've seen so far. Penn Trafford really abused the mistakes coming out of Berlin there, which is to be expected, and they ran up their score. However, in terms of mechanics, team play, organization, Winbur was trying to do it better. They were playing it methodically. They were playing it well. And they maintained the same amount of offensive pressure, but they also didn't need to run at their, their, the score. When they got goals, it was convincing. Even their own goal was convincing because <laughs> it was just too quick for anyone to stop. So overall, I would definitely say that Winbur will have the upper hand, in my opinion, over top of Penn Trafford. But as as you mentioned, there was two games we couldn't see. We only saw the two series, which the first one went in favor of Penn Trafford. The second here went in favor of Winber. And that will wrap it up for us today on this broadcast. So tomorrow, starting at 3.30, I do believe that we have the esports companies, high school leagues, Overwatch season kicking off with Division One taking place on twitch.tv the esports company and division two taking place here on the same channel twitch.tv tec high school league starting at 4 30 p.m eastern and make sure you check out all the socials for the esports company and for the league itself definitely make sure you are following everyone involved whether it's the teams the players the production and the company itself or us casters, because on today's broadcast, you've had me, Cyro Stims, who you can find on Twitter under the same name, and Atro. And Atro, where's the best place to find you? On Twitter or at Twitch, Atro Rick, both of them, you can find me there very easily. But tomorrow, starting off in the Overwatch League, uh, in the Overwatch season that's about to kick off here for the East, uh, the Esport Company High School, I'm going to be there as well, so definitely be excited for that. If your team and your school is going to be playing in there, I can't wait to see you. Thank you guys so much for joining up here into this Rocket League side of things, and thank you for watching your team play or your high school play. It's also been a blast casting with you, Syro, and uh, definitely be sure to check out this man because he's an amazing caster. I would uh, really appreciate if you guys would check me out as well. And until I see you guys tomorrow at 4.30 p.m., I guess uh, it's GG's for both teams, GG's for all the teams involved tonight, and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I guess we'll see you tomorrow. And that wraps it up here, so have a good night, and make sure you check out the stream tomorrow.